So ultimately, the first set of the first swim lane where it ends, this is the output that you would get, okay? So if you see here, what you see is the concept, the title. The title is nothing but the title of the news feed for which this company was captured, okay? So let's say Philips and the concept was hearing aid. So it tells you why did it associate this concept, this company with this news feed? Because if you read in the snippet, it says Philips brand portfolio of hearing solutions, et cetera, et cetera. So, so you know, it's basically telling you that Philips uh, uh, as a company is also working in the, you know, it's attached to the hearing aid concept. Now, as you see, Philips is also attached to cardiac monitoring, right? So it's two, two use cases for Philips. Similarly, it's, it pulled out Pfizer as well because it was Parkinson's disease and it was related to memory, memory diseases, right? Then you have stroke and so on. So if you see whatever concept the user has chosen, it is trying to pull up all the companies that are exposed to that concept. Okay, this is my favorite slide, but okay. This is the revenue segment that we tried to add and also the business dimensions here, okay? So the business segment. So if you see, it's gonna go from L1 to L6, L7 being the company to which the, the segment and the last associated company. So the L1 to L6 is what, you know, we need to map. And this is like a match that we run. This is again a vendor data that we are getting. So we get six levels of data and we work our way backwards that, okay, if it's this company Philips, can you tell us what would be the L6? What would be the L5? What would be the L4? And just imagine if I chose like 100 or 200 odd companies. And if I'm trying to run this search, uh, and currently we have around 2,300 approximate uh, distinct business segment lines, then you know, the, the worst case would be 2,200 possible matches that we're trying to run. So this is massive in terms of volumes as well, right? Now imagine somebody trying to do this on their like, you know, local computer. This wouldn't work, right? I mean, you, ne you definitely need a powerful platform to run this. Okay. So these were our um, area of challenges and probably, you know, that's opportunities. Uh, first thing, uh, first and foremost was like, you know, we had all these analysts who were working in silos, okay? So all of them would go try to get some data and they would try to run some analytics, you know, on, on whatever their understanding is. So they're going to different systems, like, you know, and trying to get data. So the source was not common, okay? Even now, probably, it's not that we've covered everybody, but that's what is our vision. Uh, so once you get the data, then you were, they were trying to run some local um, code on their machines or some, you know, using some BI tools, et cetera, and then trying to do a, come out with an extract. So, so that became a problem because, you know, everybody's working in silos, okay? And some of these uh, users are extremely tech savvy, okay? They're using Python, R, and everything. So what happens is if they write some code, and as rightly mentioned in one of uh, these, um, I think presentations in earlier in the day, it was like, you know, if you have everybody doing everything on different platforms, the consolidation was very difficult, right? Because somebody probably is using 2.7 and somebody is using 3.x, okay, so of Python version. So how do I productionize it when I know that my platform works only probably on 3.x.1? Okay, so that's that's the challenge for us. Okay, that and that's a day-to-day -day challenge for us because we have a huge analyst community. Everybody is tech savvy, and they all want to productionize their code for their own analytics. So that was one of the biggest challenge. Okay, the second one was like you know we have a lot of data available. Okay, now the problem is you know so many sources. How do we consolidate? So we had to get all the data into probably one place, one area, one data lake, whatever you call it, name it, one storage place, so that it can be accessible and it can be controlled for access as well by some governance teams. Okay, and the third one, as I said, we need, really needed um, compute capabilities because you know the thematic actually we landed up generating more than one TB of extract as the uh, company exposure only. So imagine one TB terabyte of data sitting on a local computer does no good to anybody, okay? So it has to get onto some platform. Okay, so this is where, uh, why we are here today. This is how Data IQ helps. So this is a real use case that we have implemented, okay, with Data IQ. So what, what, what really helped us is some of these pointers 
maybe not everything is explored, but at least of what we have implemented as part of real use case. So the first one is like, you know, the seamless integration for, you know, languages analytics. It could be R. So if somebody's using R, we had to get them R Studio integrated, put connectors, you know, get it integrated to our end systems. Or like, you know, if somebody's using Python, then we say, okay, this is Python. So what is the version? What are the libraries, et cetera? No. So, you know, it's one integration, one interface. Everybody logs in there. You do whatever you need in that one controlled environment, okay? The second one is like, you know, they could connect to various sources, right? So it makes them happy. They didn't have to go like, you know, hunting for data. So they could connect Oracle, they could connect uh, S3 file storage, they could connect Hadoop, they could connect to wherever they want as long as we have connectors, right? Um, a large uh, collection of predefined functions, very important because, you know, people had to code earlier, right? So now if, if there are functions being available, you know, you don't have to code and they really didn't have to get into the technological challenges, right? That if I had to write so and so formula, what should be the, you know, you have ready to define functions and if they didn't have it, they could write user defined functions. Okay, so the user defined functions comes in very handy because in this case, when we had to do a lot of like, you know, scoring or ranking uh, functionality, you know, they built functions which could actually be used across multiple projects. And, you know, a lot of users actually shared their notebooks over to each other and there was like easy collaboration amongst them. Uh, it aided distributed compu uh, computing because we, we could do Spark integrations, Hadoop. So that's how distributed computing helped to churn out all the terabytes of data. And the centralized scores repository, of course, because you know we moved away from end user computing. So people didn't have code sitting in their machines, but rather it was in one platform that is like, you know, that can be shared across with everybody. So what I would like to highlight here is that we use data IQ for a purpose, okay? It was given to the end users, analysts, data scientists as a play area, as a whiteboarding. Okay, go look what you need. If you have it, build the foundation capabilities. And if you think it's, it's really good, okay? So, you know, a lot of analysts come back to us, you know, a lot of projects get withdrawn because once it is built and then people realize, that, oh, this is not what it should be and let's go into the requirements again. So here, the analysts are actually building the foundational capabilities. They're putting in the formulas, they're doing some basic analytics with the data. If they are happy, it then goes to business and then say, okay, this looks to be very promising, should be shared should be done and then it gets converted into a project. Like the thematic basket, it started as a play area whiteboarding with the analysts and ultimately it has now got into like a full fledged project with a lot of milestones and we've successfully achieved uh, at least the first milestone where we were able to generate the fine grained extract. But yes, we, we do have uh, our next set of goals coming in pretty soon. Current limitations, this is not really of the tool, this is our own internal limitations that I put in. Uh, currently, we are not able to deploy, like, you know, we're not able to do the one-click deployment, et cetera, because of our own limitations. But yes, we have DevOps on the other platforms where we are implementing, not really Data IQ, but yeah, we do DevOps on the other tech stack that we are working on. And of course, the centralized code repository, it, Data IQ does perf um, provide like a repository, but what we're trying to do is Git integrations because not everybody has access to Data IQ and ultimately if somebody's writing a Python code, a Py file, it can go into Git and it can be shared ahead. So that's, that's, that's the limitations. So what's next in my thematic journey? It's interesting, right? So we, we are now into the descriptive, a little bit of predictive analytics mode, okay? And not everything has to be predictive. I think uh, uh, Shailesh sir mentioned it very, very rightly in, the, in his session. But not everything had to, has to be heavy, not heavy, everything has to be bulky. All we need to do is like, you know, we just need to probably improve the quality and just reduce the lead times wherever possible from the technology perspective. So I think that's where we are trying to deepen the usage. First of all, getting more users onboarded so that, you know, this way whiteboarding play area becomes a little more, you know, uh, efficient. And also we're trying to deepen the usage of NLP and ML because, you know, whatever we've implemented now is very lightweight and can be managed by users. So, you know, let's slowly get into a deepened usage of it. And the next one is on uh, the automation. Again, I said, this is something that I mentioned in the limitations and I thought it rightly should be in what's my journey next as well. So we want to build some test automation as well so that anything that gets into production, if it's a single click deployment, it, it should be tested as well, right? Somebody needs to ensure that, you know, this whatever basics are there are at least going well and it doesn't really crash down the system. So that's the test automation capabilities we are trying to build. 
So that's what is my story. Uh, I just try to keep it very simple. So it was a real use case that we implemented. And I think it is fantastic that we are trying to use data IQ as well as a part of our journey. And you know, the analysts are very, getting very supportive. So in case you have any questions or, or anything that you need additional information, please feel to reach out on my LinkedIn. Thank you. Thank you.